Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Vinu Santhu. It's the 8th of February 2024 and here are the questions we will be answering today. Has the Karnataka government gone too far by setting cab fares? How will CNG bikes change the two-wheeler industry? Why are Maruti shares taking the backseat versus Tata Motors? And what is hot money? The Karnataka government has announced fixed fares for taxis. Now, both app-based and non-app-based cab aggregators will have to follow a uniform rate chart. One of the triggers for this move was overcharging. But has the state government gone too far by setting cab fares? Abhijit Kumar and Ayush Mishra find out. Karnataka has implemented standardized kilometer-based rates for all categories of taxis operating in Bengaluru and across the state. This includes airport taxis and those associated with ride-hailing platforms. The state government has cautioned against unauthorized practices like surge pricing. As per the notification issued by the State Transport Department, the fares have been categorized according to vehicle's cost. The pricing structure includes minimum charges and additional fees per kilometre. Under the revised structure, the starting fare for a distance of up to 4 kilometres is 100 rupees for vehicles valued up to 10 lakh rupees, accompanied by an extra charge of 24 rupees per kilometre beyond that distance. For vehicles priced between 10 lakh rupees and 15 lakh rupees, the initial 4 kilometre fare is established at 115 rupees with an additional rate of 28 rupees per kilometre thereafter. Vehicles surpassing the 15 lakh rupees threshold will incur a minimum fare of 130 rupees for the initial 4 kilometers. Additionally, a 10% surcharge is imposed on taxis operating from midnight to 6 am. Passengers can carry up to 120 kg of luggage with excess weight incurring 7 rupees per kilogram charge. Initial 5 minutes of waiting are free, followed by 1 rupee per minute. Taxi operators and aggregators can collect 5% GST and toll charges, emphasizing fares based on distance. So how will this move impact cab aggregators? For cab services, the entire business model uh, relies on uh, essentially keeping making prices higher when there is more demand and keeping prices low when there is less demand. So if prices uh, are low when there is less demand, it encourages people to choose these cabs as a mode of transportation uh, and it makes them even more affordable. And uh, by making prices higher when demand is high, it benefits drivers by allowing them to get more money at a time when there is higher demand supply. Fixed pricing doesn't make sense because uh, the demand for cabs, the demand for transportation is different at different points in time. Uh, you can't charge the same price for someone let's say, at, at 11.30 a.m. when demand for transportation is low, uh, as compared to 9 a.m. when demand for transportation is the highest. And how will it impact the cab drivers? There could be a certain impact on the incentives the drivers were getting because now with the standardization uh, taking effect and the lack of uh, surge pricing and everything, uh, the incentive the drivers were taking home may be reduced or done away altogether, uh, especially by uh, the aggregator cab service providers. A, a concern with regard to the exploitation of the drivers themselves because uh, the aggregator service providers would try and exploit the drivers in terms of uh, the access. Worries regarding surge prices are not new. In the past, the Delhi government also acknowledged the concern but has yet to address surge pricing by app-based cab aggregators. It has indicated that rules will be formulated if public complaints arise. The Competition Commission of India had previously advised cab services to disclose the breakdown of the total fare to accurately reflect the surge component in the invoice that is generated on the app and forwarded to drivers and passengers. CCI had also issued a set of self-regulatory measures to ensure fair competition and an overall well-functioning ecosystem. However, these guidelines were self-regulation guidelines and not orders. So, instead of fixing fares, what else can be done to ensure transparency on pricing and surge mechanism? I think the only transparency that needs to be addressed is the relationship between the driver and the cab service. 
uh, yes, consumers deserve to know more, but how search pricing is calculated um, is an algorithmic function based on demand and supply at a particular point in time at a particular location. Um, and, you know, there might be people who are willing to pay more at a particular point in time and the drivers benefit from that. And there might be points in time where people want to pay less. And the, again, the consumers benefit from that. So uh, these are complex like, algorithmic determinations. Yes, there is, they are prone to manipulation. And so in that case, there should be algorithmic accountability to regulators. Even delivery, when you're talking about food delivery, you don't get uh, a per kilometer pricing for delivery service. Is that going to be next? Ride hailing platforms thrive on surge pricing during peak demand, while lower prices in off peak hours attract customers. Experts believe fixed fares are impractical due to demand fluctuations. Eliminating surge pricing may enhance predictability but could impact driver earnings and maintaining high prices during low demand may reduce overall cab demand. Interestingly, the licenses of Ola and Uber had expired in 2021, but both the cab aggregators have been operating cabs and autos in Karnataka. The state has refused to renew the licenses on grounds of non-compliance of regulations. Moving on, Bajaj Auto is going to launch an entry-level motorcycle which will be powered by CNG, something the world has never seen before. Honda had tried its luck with its Activa model but couldn't succeed. So how will CNG bikes change the two-wheeler industry if Bajaj succeeds in its mission? Ayush Mishra finds out. Bajaj Auto's managing director, Rajiv Bajaj, has recently revealed the company's plan to launch an affordable motorcycle which will operate on CNG. Yes. You heard it right. The underlying idea is that CNG motorcycles would be cost-effective and offer relief to people from high petrol prices. The penetration of CNG in all three wheelers has jumped from 26% in 2020 to 57% now due to low cost of running. In passenger three wheelers, CNG is 67%. And Bajaj Auto, which is the leader in CNG-powered passenger three-wheelers, is now all set to try its luck where no one has succeeded. In 2016, the central government initiated a trial in collaboration with Indrapras Gas Limited to operate two-wheelers using CNG in Delhi. The pilot involved converting a few Honda Activa scooters to CNG, but the project did not succeed. And way back in 2009, Zanilla, in Argentina came out with a factory-fitted CNG model, but it did not lead to a big commercial breakthrough. Some companies in China have tried it too, but did not look at scale. But undeterred by the earlier setbacks, Bajaj Auto is likely to roll out a CNG-run motorcycle before the end of next year. So what is the logic behind it? As a country, you know, with 1.4 billion population, right, we need help from all forms of energy. There is no one set of energy that will fit all all uh, all requirements, right? So you need to come up, have a holistic approach. There will also be a, people will there will always be a segment uh, um, which the new technologies can target, right? Because uh, uh, the affordability is increasing. Petrol bikes usually give a mileage of 50 to 60 kilometers for one liter of petrol, which costs 90 to 110 rupees. On the other hand, CNG powered two wheelers have a mileage of approximately 100 kilometers per kg of gas, with a cost ranging between 70 and 80 rupees. India is among the world's fastest growing markets for EVs, with sales rising 49% year on year in calendar year 2023 to over 1.5 million units. According to a McKinsey report, the outlook for motorcycles and scooters in India is promisingly electric. Two-wheeler vehicles are deeply ingrained in India's mobility landscape due to their accessibility and affordability. Reports suggest that by 2030, electric two-wheelers will make up 60 to 70 percent of new two-wheeler sales in India. So can CNG bikes compete with EV bikes? 
if you look at the bike space, right, uh, each type of vehicle has got a different kind of uh, function and opportunity. CNG bikes uh, could compete with EV in terms of total cost of ownership and the cost of, uh, you know, um, average cost per trip and things like that. Um, also, the opportunity there is to broaden your uh, basket of uh, the types of vehicles that you have so that you can address other issues such as sustainability and the whole mileage uh, issue that you uh, that the automakers have to go forward and face and can bajaj two wheeler succeed in the cng segment since bajaj or any oem became successful in the cng three wheeler segment they can replicate the same success here definitely in that in terms of technology they will have an edge compared to other competitors because you know they they have huge experience in managing this cng technology but whether you know there will be an uptake of this cng two wheelers in the two wheeler segment uh, that is yet to be seen rakesh sharma the executive director of bajaj auto told business standard that they anticipate cng two wheelers to parallel the market share of electric vehicles he said that if the projection is that 5 to 7% of motorcycles will transition to electric there is a logical expectation for a comparable percentage for cng i think similar success is 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 you know uh, at this point in time it's very challenging to say that it's going to gain the similar success because cng autos has been getting benefit from the government incentives the mandate there are mandates right uh, in different cities for the cng autos etc i think uh, there are not going to be mandates for two wheelers uh, uh, definitely there has there can be some uh, implement some share of petrol vehicles to be converted into cng vehicles and specific buyers will definitely be going to be there but uh, in very immediate term i do not see uh, very similar success than cng auto but maybe in the 5 year or or 10 years uh, a long term uh, period of time it might gain the momentum bajaj meanwhile looks determined its success will certainly pave the way for others but will cng bikes become commercially viable well we all want to know staying with the automobile theme india's largest automaker maruti has lost the tag of the most valued auto stock to its competitor tata motors tata motors has been at the forefront on the purses among other peers while strong jlr sales have been lending support to tata motors why is maruti trailing find out in this report by harshita singh Until last week India's largest car maker Maruti Suzuki was also the most valued auto stock on the bourses however on 30th January this spot was reclaimed by Tata Motors after 7 years as its total market capitalization crossed Maruti's 3.13 trillion rupee mark in terms of absolute gains too in the past 6 months Tata Motors shares rallied 37% making it the biggest gainer among passenger vehicle players maruti meanwhile has seen its stock rise only 4% during this period tata motors has been deriving strength from jlr sales and domestic product launches across premium suvs and evs for maruti analysts attribute the underperformance to its relatively slow start in the high demand suv segment and virtually no presence in the ev space then for uh, maruti's uh under performance when compared to uh tata motors the main uh, uh, the concern is their conservative approach in terms of entering uh, uh, the suv segment and also making the premium products uh, in the passenger line has uh, uh impacting their market share at this point of time the large suvs are concerned uh, around 20 to 25 lakhs uh, maruti uh, they don't have a product propositions at this point of time maruti have not revealed any kind of their future forward plans towards the electric vehicle segment is concerned that's where the maruti is lagging both in terms of the large suvs uh, and uh, and uh, the ev segment is concerned maruti is completely lagging 
Amid rising competition, especially with the launches of premium SUVs, Maruti has been losing market share in the overall passenger vehicle segment. In FY23, its volume share in the PV market was down to 41% from 51% in FY19, while Tata Motors held the third largest spot at 14%. However, within SUVs, Maruti has increased its market share to 21% during April to December 2023 from just 13% in FY23. Analysts still note its launch pipeline is unimpressive as compared to that of Tata Motors. The launch cycle of uh, Maruti is largely over and one uh, launch which is expected in uh, next fiscal year is electric vehicle which will be a key watch point. However, as compared to Tata Motors, the uh, Maruti's launch cycle is uh, uh, largely over and uh, no fresh uh, launches in the ICE segment are expected. As a result, uh, we expect Tata Motors to take lead. Tata Motors is uh, trading at 15x 12 month forward P against its long term average of 23x, whereas Maruti is trading at uh, uh, 22x uh, 12 month forward P against a long term average of 24x. So Tata Motors still has some comfort uh, given its uh, robust outlook in the passenger vehicle and uh, tailwinds from the JLR business. Thus, with Maruti slowly rising up in the SUV market, its first EV SUV launch in FY25 is a key trigger as its small car sales remain muted amid inflationary pressures. Today, on 8th February, the last street action will be guided by the RBI's monetary policy outcome and global queues. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard India's financial markets and economy are set to get a leg up after the country's inclusion into JP Morgan's Emerging Market Debt Index. But it will also keep the regulator on its toes because of the so-called hot money. Now, what is hot money? Ayush Mishra explains. In the world of global finance, hot money refers to funds that are controlled by investors who actively seek high short-term returns. It's part of an investment strategy where the fund moves swiftly around the world chasing favorable rates or safe heavens. Economies attract inflow of funds or hot money when their interest rate differentials are favorable compared to other economies. Besides creating short-term liquidity for the recipient country, hot money can also influence the country's capital flow and currency exchange rate. Traditionally, short-term bank deposits are preferred by investors to park hot money in other economies. Some of the common instruments to park hot money include stocks, deposits, bonds, commodities, currencies, and derivatives. Usually, hot money originates in capital-rich economies with low interest rates like the US and is diverted to growing economies like India and China with high interest rates or yield. Hot money flows inherently volatile pose risks to recipient countries or institutions, triggering potential instability. When one institution lowers interest rates or another offers higher rates, investors swiftly withdraw funds, intensifying stock market volatility and currency fluctuations. Rapid withdrawals from banks may also trigger banking crisis. Recently, a senior finance ministry official has hinted at India's proactive stance to mitigate potential volatility in the Indian currency and bond markets stemming from hot money influx, triggered by the inclusion of Indian government bonds in JP Morgan's Emerging Market Debt Index. The aim is to prevent volatility and manage the flow of funds, particularly foreign funds. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Union Finance Secretary T.V. Somanathan has assured that the government will keep a tab on such inflows and will also take steps when needed. That's all for today. For more news and analysis, please log into our website business-standard.com. Thank you for watching.
If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.